Hi there, and welcome to episode one of the Great Sleeper series. I'm Icon, and this is my first series on ideology, and it has been released yesterday while I'm recording this. And this is also a 99% vanilla series with a goal to finish the Arconex, uh, to go for the Arconex's ending. So I use only four mods, which are in the description box below, and they are entirely quality of life mods. For one, I use a mod which lets me speed up time more. I mean, that's in the interest of the series. I use one that lets me zoom out with the camera a little bit more and a little bit deeper. And then I use one which lets me replace things. And the last one I use brings, uh, brings up a little bit more tidiness into the crafting system of the game. My builds look like that because I don't like the basic uh, functionalities, but none of these mods actually change anything about the gameplay. I wanted to implement the minimap, but then I decided against it because the minimap is an, an improvement of gameplay. It makes things easier. So nope, this is vanilla as much as I can as much as I can tweak it down. I just want to replace things and I want to have some visual clarity. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get uh, into the game itself. So I built up an ideology, the way of Arco technology. The belief of good old Gracie here is that all the world that she's living in is just a just a simulation, so kind of a, kind of a matrix uh, trope there, which she's following. And her goal is to find out into the real world, and that's why we go for the Arconex's ending, because I know enough about this uh, gameplay that it fits quite well into this idea. Because of these beliefs, she is pretty much willing to uh, spread a belief that has body modification on a uh, good way. She believes that, well, she's better than other people and humans are better than everything else because we are the ones to escape the great dream. And of course, drugs are very welcome because, you know, drugs elevate you to another state of mind. Basically, the uh, this faction will believe that while taking drugs, you can escape out of the simulation for a moment and find true bliss. So, overall, the precepts of this uh, faction, these are the rules, This uh, these influence how you gain or lose mood because of your actions are pretty grim. Because of the fact that she believes that all of this is just a simulation, People are not worried about, uh, well, eating other people, about corpses lying around, slavery and all these things. Organ use is acceptable. I plan to play a pretty, um, well, a pretty evil series without focusing too hard on evilness. Gracie doesn't do that because she's evil. She do does that because nothing is real anyways. So we're also playing on a desert tile because I felt like I wanted to spice up things with a little bit of an environmental challenge as well. And we run with our good old storyteller Cassandra, she's my favorite, on a blood and dust setting. I will go nevertheless for something I do always, we go for a friendly fire ratio of 0% because this is a simulation anyways, you can't shoot your friends. Jokes aside, I don't like how friendly fire in this game works because NPCs have killed my people with a uh, out of absurd reasons one time too many of them. Okay, so that's that. Well, let's get out of the simulation and have some fun. And I hope you guys like the concept and this and the idea of the series because this will be a big project, I guess. Because the Arconex's ending is, as far as I understood things, the the longest available so far, the longest way there. I don't want to spoil it too much if you don't know what I'm talking about. Just enjoy the show. So grab some popcorn or, or whatever you want to go for. Let's have some fun. So living in the desert is not that easy at all. When we check out the wildlife, there's uh, just a couple of dromedaries hanging around here. And when we check out forage and things like that, there's also not too much here. So Gracie will have to work hard for her food. Gracie herself is a pretty versatile person. Her only weakness is construction. I know that's a little bit hard, but I kept uh, I, I wanted it that way. And by the way, I haven't mentioned it yet. We're starting with the rich explorer background, which which means we have only one person, completely nut job. 
a complete nut job and we have started out with gun turrets and overall a high amount of high-tech gear so the first thing i do i am going to go and allow everything right click on the allow button and nothing here is forbidden anymore this structure here is wonderful i will stay here for a while i mean we even have more ruins which i can utilize here i have a steam geyser available I would say this is a pretty good start for the way of aqua technology. So there's some steel over here. I'm just probing the environment. Oh, hey there, beautiful. We have gold. Nice. Okay. So I'm I was so hyped about the DLC and I'm so happy that it's here uh, finally. And uh, we can now play a Roleplay runs so much better than ever before. I like that. I really, really do like that. Oh, we have a requirement of execution. Okay. I see. I forgot to configure that. It was an automatic thing from the supremacist uh, meme, but that's okay. Just figure. I just wondered if I want to have more slavery or not. So, we're going to build for starters with steel i know that steel is actually a valuable resource but right here wood is even more valuable because i know that in this area here wood is really hard to come by so we're going to claim this structure here and let's see gracie your biggest concern is constructing and holding for the time being i'm really really super happy that i rolled a lucky walk here i <laughs> i didn't expect to get that lucky but there's something we need to do here i need to deconstruct those limestone doors because i don't i can't stand the idea of being stuck with stone doors here that's uh, that's unacceptable so gracie has horrible construction skills i'm well aware of that so we're going to keep that other door for now it sounds a little bit crazy but i don't want to waste that much time right now one wooden door is enough i hope she will prefer the wooden one from here on but you should okay so we have a, a a room which we can put a roof above and let's bring up a animal sleeping spot for cooter my my trusty friend so i also made up a lot of uh, little details for this whole belief i hope we're going to have some fun with that along the way so I really, really like the fact that we can now build up our own culture with the Ideology DLC. We didn't really see much of that yet, but we will do in the time being. For now, Gracie needs to... ...needs to take care for her own survival, first and foremostly. When you go for the Rich Explorer start, you are quite bound to a lot of... Uh, survival stuff at the beginning but i do like that a lot so well let's put construction on a lower priority for for a second actually quite a uh, lucky thing that all these walls are so banged up because she will learn a lot about construction during the process of the repairs there actually good didn't uh didn't know how, how lucky i was with that ruins so we're going to put up a table here and well i don't have enough limestone for a, a table like that we have granite columns here nobody needs those hmm. oh well we're going to uh, put up a steel table nevertheless and a steel stool i'm living quite generous with my steel right now but i'm okay with that Gracie's today just uh, getting her, uh, moving her bearings into her new home. I hope we will find some uh, friends outside there soon. New to the DLC are now these uh, little artifacts, ancient wheels, ancient wall walker shell. 
ancient kitchen sink, war spider remains, monster. I really like these things because they uh, they give me they help me uh, living in that fantasy of being on a on a lost and forlorn planet in the fifty sixth century. So let's uh, send Gracie to build her her table so she doesn't go nuts while eating. Awful table, normal quality stool at least. Okay, good job, Gracie. I like Gracie's skill set because <clears throat> she's very good at su uh, at surviving out there. She has a lot of plants and animal skills. She also has mining and fighting pretty decently. Social is on a good ranking too, because that's important later down the road when she's going to be the great sleeper of her of the Archotechnologists or Archotechnists. Sorry. <laughs> so. But she's bad at constructing, cooking, and medical things, which is actually really, really bad. But I figured for the sake of a challenge, I felt like it was a really fun thing to do. Because when you start out all alone, and if you want that person not only to be a survivor, but also the leader of your new crazy cyber sect, you, you have to sacrifice something. So... I ordered Gracie now to plant herself some potatoes. Potatoes are just awesome here. Potatoes have a very low fertility sensitivity and a very low fertility requirement, which means they grow well in bad environments. And the desert sports very few patches of good fertility. Well, there's only this uh, here. And beyond that, you see those yellows. Everything, every area yellow here has a 70% fertility rate, which is perfect for breeding potatoes or uh, raising potatoes, planting potatoes, whatever, you get my idea. And with a rating, with a skill rating of 11, Gracie has no problem to sustain herself like that. That was a very important thing for me when I started out the series because I was very concerned about my survival. Desert is, is not really easy. I mean, it's not as brutal as extreme desert, but I didn't want to go for an extremely brutal challenge. Desert is, uh, is challenging and fun. Extreme desert is only challenging and minus the fun. Extreme desert feels even a bit worse than ice sheet in some, in some way, but better than sea ice. So it's somewhere in between. Okay, here we go. Gracie's now grinding away on her uh, repairing skills. But that's really good, because repairing these walls gives her a few points of construction, which is actually really important for us. Because right now her skills are so bad, she's not even able to construct herself anything electric. Not really cool for somebody who's believing that she's living in a cybernetic simulation or a whatever simulation and trying to escape from that. You need to learn more about technology and such things. The green thing in her face, if you're wondering, is a face mask. Because I figured that since the Archotechnists believe that everything is an illusion, the human body and the human face itself is less and less important. So that's why they all will wear masks. I've got lots of ideas about their society, and I can't wait to carve this uh, the monuments of the Archotechnists into the into the mountain here. Hey, look at that! That's an old shuttle landing space. There's concrete in there out in the desert. I like that. Okay, so we have thirty six package survival meals available, and there's I think this should be enough potato to live from for now. So another thing that I want to do right from the beginning is I want to use these high fertility patches for some heal root. And also for some smoke leaf. Because you know we are we are a high life ideology. So ideologin 
It's a, it's a weird word. <laughs> Trying to get used to it, but it's not that easy. <laughs> Okay, so Gracie is now living without light in her uh, in her humble hut. The problem with the desert is there's almost no wood available. There's just these friggin' cactus things and sometimes a single Drago tree. That's why I keep wood under under control. Because right now we are just in the Apreme, but the longer we will play here we will get to pretty high temperatures. And if you are really bad at construction like I am here, the passive cooler is your best friend to survive high temperatures. But to use the passive cooler, you need wood. So all the wood is reserved for that for now. And I'm also planting down a pretty uh, generous amount of heal root because she's really bad at medical things. And therefore, I want to have medicine available if necessary if you have such a good uh, such a good farmer it's always a good idea to to do these things as quick as possible the potatoes will grow hopefully quick enough if not we can just shoot something Ooh, my next meal holy okay we need to we need to do something I wonder, yeah, I can't, I can't put, put up a fuel stove, that's good. Since I'm not good enough at construction to put up electricity, we're going to do this. So, that's one thing, and the other thing will be the butcher table. Am I running out of steel already? Mm. Oh, well, I'm going to build that uh, butcher table out of wood. I don't want to stress out my steel stockpiles that hard. Okay, here we go. Playing horseshoes, is that necessary? So the button-down shirt and the face mask are the uh, standard clothing of the of this uh, the sect faction way of life let's call it whatever however we want so let's refuel that thing and we need to put up a bill for butchering creatures i'm just gonna order her to do that forever this way i can just check if there's a body of something out there to grab okay so we need to cook New meals, carnivore meals, vegetarian meals. That's also new stuff with the newest version. No, we're, we're going to cook simple meals and we're going to cook them forever. Because Gracie is really bad at cooking. I'm going to use that for training. So there's another person coming. Let's see. Oh boy. How much percentile chance on a food poisoning do you have with cooking zero? 5%. One of 20 meals will give you the pukies. Oh my god. <laughs> That's not cool. Okay, I, I got tons of money. That's, uh, the That's the good news about this start. We will buy ourselves a couple of joints. Because, you know, part of our ideology. And I'm going to buy myself some pemmican, because pemmican doesn't go bad. I mean, it does go bad eventually, but I think 1.2 years are enough to uh, to eat, eat up my stockpiles here. So, Gracie, you can consume some of that raw bird meat. Just want to get rid of the stockpiles here as quick as I can. Okay, so we're going to carve out that thing and make it more beautiful here. And a gift. Recurve Bow and Slate Club. How dare you? We despise Neolithic weapons. Because Ultra Attack is the only thing which is possibly close to reality. So, we're going to sell that stuff. They were trying to help, I guess. Okay. 
So those simple meals will go bad quite soonish. So I'm going to uh, focus them right now. Not going to disturb Gracie's work on the heal roots here, even though it's a very time intense early game thing. I know that I will be grateful one day later to have some heal roots available. Because, like I mentioned before, heal root is not native to this environment. Or I don't know, maybe I didn't mention it. But uh, that's the thing about it. Let's chop down some tree. What do we have here? Oh, a steel ruin. Awesome. That's pretty good. So I leave Gracie now to the work of repairing these things because I can't really do much more with my time than repairing these things, waiting for my food to grow, and training construction. And, well, construction doesn't train... Doesn't, can't be trained without doing anything, so... Well... I'm quite happy. I'm going to claim these ruins here too, and repair them. Claim these here too, claim that too. The steel ones I will deconstruct afterwards. Just like the granite columns here. Gracie is living the good life out here. Just a wee bit concerned about a first raid. Hmm. Though, the problem there is I can't even put up a spike trap. So, let's try one thing. Want to train my dog. So probably Cooter can be trained to actually attack for me. But he does have the the guard training, so he will try to come to Gracie's help. So we can't train him because we have no usable food. Let's see, we should be able to do something about that. So I don't want to go for an ostrich, but maybe we're going to go for a dromedary tomorrow. I'm really, really scared about my first raid, because Gracie is not really a good shooter, and she's not really fast or anything. She has no traits whatsoever, which would help her to survive that first fight, and there's a decent chance to just die, and that would be really, really tragic. And since I can't even construct a trap, I'm really tense about that. I can't uh, construct a gun turret because I don't have the necessary construction skill. Well, I knew what I did there when I did it. When I did it, but we're we're in for the first raid quite soon. Pretty sure about that. So, ah, Cooter is uh, is responsible for the food the other day okay so let's ignore the time penalty here and oh yeah i have no storage zone for corpses yet i see and i need to put up priorities here doctoring needs a high priority bed rest not so much but basic jobs do okay so, wonderful. Cooter does not only provide me food, he also provides me with the necessary uh, food to actually train him. Wonderful. Win-win. Here we go. Once he's done sleeping, we can train him. I think my survival chances aren't that bad. If the first raider... I just need to get the first raider some, somehow into my warg, and then everything will be okay from there on. Because a, a standard raider has no chance against the war. These things are just absolutely ridiculously deadly. At the beginning of the game, at least. I consider myself very, very lucky to have one of those killers. So, training. Wait a sec, she has a 100% chance of succeeding at training? My goodness. Nice. <laughs> Seriously nice. Okay, so Gracie is surviving quite good here. Construction is getting slowly forward. Well, I'm okay with this decision. 
I like uh, challenges. And as a matter of fact, later down the road, I will be super grateful uh, towards myself for this decision because Gracie is really good at surviving. Like, fetching food for her is a super easy task. She has little to no problems uh, to support such a farm all on her own. <laughs> that was actually the, the least she could have done. We could have done way more than that. <laughs> Pretty good news. I don't want to overproduce that uh, brutally, though. That's also no use. Yes! Okay, Cooter can attack. I feel safe now. Good stuff. Go forward, Gracie, and train your construction. So that's, by the way, why I have implemented the Smart Speed mod. Because I feel like there are times in this game, especially when you are playing just with one colonist, there's a lot to comment, but there's not so much to play with. A exotic goods trader. Why am I? My, my. Okay. Let's go for that. Oh, I wish they would have a person for sale, but they only have a duck. <laughs> Not quite. An architect eye. Oh, me wants power claw. Well, me wants not so much. Architect eye would be badass, but well, can't afford it at this point. Flat screen telly. No. No, no, and no. This guy has sadly nothing to offer for me. Oh, man. Tragic. Would have been really cool, but... Hmm. Ah, the Ash Killers. Tiffy the computer is coming at us. Alright, let's go get Tiffy. I mean, technically I could just let these uh, let Tiffy meet the trading caravan, but as a matter of fact, I want the shooting training. Wait, we need to... We need to drop Cooter. Oh, wait a sec. We should have a meal first. Gracie was quite hungry. Yeah. Like I said, combat training is really important. And I can still kite Tiffy into the traders if I want to. Ooh, there goes the first salvo. Shoulder hit. Okay. Wonderful. I'm going to release the dog. There's no reason to risk my life here, if Cooter is so strong here and available. Let's see, Tiffy is strong enough to be a little bit of a problem, but... Okay, here we go. Cooter will die in a couple of hours, poor thing. Let's grab that smoke leaf joint and patch up the dog. Good boy! And you see, she's that bad at medicine. If Cooter ever is uh, lethally wounded, I don't want to spend the world meds every time. I have to patch him up. And there's even more people visiting my place. Awesome. Oh, look at that. They are fans of the face mask, too. Good taste. <laughs> I love it. How Look at this. He's all patched up now where he got wounded. Awesome. So... I just realized that I'm lacking one more mod, which I would, which I will implement at the beginning of the next episode, and that's the Achtung mod, which allows me to micromanage the work of my people a little bit better. So that's one more quality of life thing which I will implement, actually. But beyond that, we won't have more mods. Promise. Okay, guys, that's uh, enough for one episode. We have settled in. I hope you guys are as eager as I am to explore the story of the way of Arco technology. We will discover the Arco Nexus ending together, I hope. And yeah, let's have some fun while we're doing so. So feel free to drop me your comments down below. I'd be more than happy to hear from you. And of course, leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed it. And last but not least, check out my channel. There's a lot of cool stuff going on there on a daily basis. Just subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss any of my videos. And like I mentioned in the description box down there, you will find the links to the, or no, just the listing of the mods used. And also you will find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams. And on top of that, there's also links to a 
supporty stuff if you want to go for that patreon or whatever scratches your itch i'd be really happy if you'd give them a look and if not just let me say thanks for watching because that's really awesome of you see you guys next time and bye bye